So with that, I want to hand it off to, uh, to Gabriel Nicasio, who's uh, talking to us today from Rochester. And his team from the Rochester Institute of Technology in New York, uh, there were three folks on his team. He can tell you a little bit more about them. And they worked on a, an LCD monitor, um, which uh, we'll show you a little bit more about. So Gabe, you want to you take it from here? OK, thank you, Don. My name is Gabe Nicasio. I'm a fourth year industrial design student at Rochester Institute of Technology. We designed this uh, mo LCD monitor that has easy access to the internal components and mainly focusing on the replacement of uh, the, the LCD display itself and the backlights. Um, our group, we had two ID students, John and myself. And Praneeth was is a computer engineering major, and our roles in the project um, actually came quite clear, and that helped us a lot in focusing on completing this project. Uh, John has is really in, in hands-on worker, so he did a lot of tinkering with the monitors and took a a Dell monitor apart, and so we could see the how the internal components on monitors are currently put together. And Praneeth, it was great with ideas, and he has a strong technical background and kind of helped us ID students keep our ideas kind of level and feasible as far as technology goes. Um, next slide, please. In the, the top left rendering there, you can see that there's a two, easy, two buttons at the top of the monitor that just simply are spring-loaded. And it allows the front, uh, front piece of the housing to swing down. So you have the LCD display and the backlights with, uh, right in front of you. Um, the LCD, there, there are four sliders, which are the orange pieces. They simply slide back, uh, slide into the housing to lock down the LCD display and the backlights. And once they're slid back and unlocked, there are tabs on the LCD or on the on the backlights, and you simply just lift them out and replace them if they need to be replaced. And there's no wiring, tricky wiring. It's all pre-wired, so there are contacts on the end of the uh, on the ends of the backlights that give them power, and then the the display can be easily lifted out as well. And uh, this our solution, we came up with it. We wanted to go for a very simple solution. A monitor is a very simple product. It doesn't have many features as far as functionality goes. Most people only push on, push the power button to turn it on, and that's really the only thing that they, uh, that they, how they interact with the product. And um, when we first started out, we took apart that Dell monitor, and it was really, really difficult. We had to pry open the housing, and in doing this, we basically destroyed the monitor and um, we for our video we compared we made a model we used a a broken monitor for our model which kind of seems like cheating almost but it actually turned out really well because we could see that our product um, the components the actual components could really be replaced in this manner. And you can see John is on the left. He's taking apart the easy access monitor. Just simply unplugs the display from the circuit and it can pop out. It fits back in. And then once that's plugged back in, he puts back in the LCD light or the back lights. And um, I'm on the right there struggling to open up this, just the housing as he's finishing up completing it. I think I finally cracked it open there with a 
a wood chisel or something. And um, yeah, John's done there, and it was, it was, I think the video is really effective in showing um, how simple this process sh really should be and can be, and it shows how uh, the monitor now is really not repair not repairable by is, it w cannot be repaired probably by the average consumer. There's a lot of tricky wiring and awkward fasteners and other, among other things that um, and it was very difficult for us three students who are normally uh, taking apart things and tinkering with things and actually enjoy doing that kind of things. So your average consumer would probably never be able to make these repairs and that's, um, that's a problem that could easily be fixed with our monitor. Cool. Thanks so much, Gabe. Um, you know, I think the the video actually illustrates the big problem that we're really trying to solve. You know, I think yeah. that, that it kind of takes us back to to that, which is which is quite wonderful. You know, because uh, yeah. most most products look like this. I, I teach a class that uh, that Kyle Weens from my Fix It came in and uh, and handed hard drives out to all the students, and everybody tried to ha to tear them apart, and it was exceptionally challenging <laughs> yeah. without having specialized tools or without him handing handing tools out. I did want to bring out uh, just a couple of, of notes that um, that some of the other other judges pointed out uh, you know Jeremy Faludi who um, who's taught at Stanford he's one of the people who helped us develop the, the sustainability workshop and he's a sustainable designer and, and physicist uh, he he really liked the fact that you guys looked up the main causes of death for monitors uh, that you looked at the issues around connections um, but a lot of folks, like we, we, we all really liked the fact that you actually built and tested it with real people. That's that's fantastic. Um, and also just the, the fact that it was a tool-free design. Um, the video was great, you know, just, just to kind of express that. Um, very low tech, but but it got uh, got the, the point across, and I think that was in a lot of ways what was what was very compelling about this. Uh, Dan Lockton also called this out and said, you know, um, this could have a real significant impact on consumers repair behavior with monitors and potentially laptops too because it offers a cost benefit to users and actually potentially monitor manufacturers because of warranty costs uh, as well as the environmental benefit in terms of reducing the number of whole monitors that are thrown away rather than repaired. So he also liked the fact that it, it, it addresses the, the question of how do you increase users' confidence in repairing their own products, so, um, which is you know, a big thing that, we, that we're talking about throughout all of these. So, Thank you so much for that and, uh, and really nice work to the whole team.